Hello, 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 and welcome to the uh, project video for week 11 of our intro to creative web dev course. Uh, this week you learned about JavaScript and you learned about um, writing JavaScript that gets input from a user and then takes that input and outputs it to the page somehow. Um, so uh, the examples in the tutorial kind of just output someone's name directly into the uh, page. Where is that? That's here. So I can type my name and uh, you then see, hello, my name. And this was to demonstrate just the, the syntax, the, the approach that you would take um, kind of generally. And now to practice that, we are going to use that and uh, create a project that does something a little more interesting with that. So this week's project is to create a Mad Libs game. If you're not familiar with Mad Libs, uh, it's this kind of, I don't know, this kid's book kind of thing, uh, kind of game where you uh, write a story that has like blanks in it, and then you ask your partner uh, to uh, fill in those blanks. You don't tell them what the story is ahead of time, but you say things like, give me an adjective, and they'll tell you something like uh, handsome or whatever, uh, or tall. Uh, and then you'd say like, give me a noun, and they might say like dog or uh, Florida, you know, is Florida a noun? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think it is, person, place, or thing. Uh, anyway, so you would ask for certain uh, types of words, and then you would plug those words in to the story uh, where you had blanks, and then you would tell the story to your partner. And it's just kind of goofy and fun and, um, it uh, has has had several like formats and whatnot, but um, so if you're not familiar, uh, maybe go check out this Wikipedia page, which kind of describes it a little bit more. But the idea is you fill in some blanks and then you give a you you show a story or you tell a story uh, with those blanks filled in. Um, so that's the idea. You're going to write JavaScript, well HTML and JavaScript that sort of implements that in in a web page so uh, requirements wise what i'm looking for is five input elements that asks for five different words and then those words are plugged into a story that's really what i'm looking for how you do that exactly is kind of up to you um, if you want to i don't know build your entire story in javascript and then use that to you know output that in html that's totally cool um, or if you wanted to have like five, I don't know, like span elements that you um, take the values from input elements and then put those into spans, that also works. Um, kind of up to you, but as long as you have five input elements and then JavaScript that gets values from those input elements and then puts them into a story, that's what I'm looking for. Um, so I have provided an example here, so maybe I'll start by just kind of working through that. And let me start by creating a replic, create an HTML, CSS, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I'll call this uh, Mad Libs Project. And I'll create that. And then I'll go over here and I'll sort of steal the code from, from the example that I provided. I'll put this in my index.html. Oh, that's really gross. Can I make that smaller? Sure. And so this is my index.html this is my html but my javascript by default uh, is empty so i need to go steal that as well so let me get this and okay now i have um index.html which first of all loads the script.js file so that's over here and um it provides a, a couple things or it contains a couple html elements so it's got a p tag and then an input with an id another p tag input with an id um, some new lines just to make the button on its own line and then a button with an on click attribute that calls the submit function and then it has another p tag and um, some content which has like the and then here's a span with an id another span with an id um, okay and then if I jump over to script.js, 
here's where my function submit is uh, defined. Let me maybe clean this up. Can I save this? Does it automatically? No. Um, I want to maybe introduce some, some new lines here because this is gross. If I save that, will it fix itself? No. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Okay. So I'm just cleaning up the formatting so it's a little easier to read on this tiny screen. And good enough. So what this code does in the submit function, which is called when I click this button, is first I create a variable called adjective input element, and I set that equal to what is returned from calling the document.getElementById function, passing it this uh, this this parameter. Um, now that I have that element, then I get the value from that element and store that in my adjective variable. Uh, then similarly, I call the document.getElementById function with adjective output. So if I go to my index.html uh, file, I see that adjective output is the ID for this span, which is uh, right now just contains the word quick. And so the adjective output element contains a reference to this element in, in JavaScript. And then I set the inner text of that element to whatever the adjective was, which uh, I got from the input element here. So just to kind of test this out, and I could maybe step through this, which does the exact same thing for this input and uh, this output. So uh, let me just kind of click through it and, and uh, we'll see how it works. So uh, give me an adjective. Uh, I don't know, what did I say before, handsome? Uh, maybe, that's not, <laughs> maybe that's not a good word. Um, I'll say slow. Uh, and I'll put in all caps just so it's a little easier to see. And then give me a color, green. And I'll click OK. And you see that my story kind of changes to be the slow green fox jumps over the lazy dog. This is just an example. It has two inputs, but the, the code uh, works. And you can follow this same pattern for, um, for, for three more words. Um, so I might start. Uh, so if I was doing this project, now that I have this this code working, I might start first of all by maybe changing my story. So, you know, it's up to you. If you want to use the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog as your story, you, you can. Um, but it's totally up to you. You can maybe choose like, I don't know, song lyrics um, that uh, you you find especially, I don't know, good or interesting, or you can use like a scene from a movie or a scene from a book, whatever. You can pick whatever um, whatever story that you want. Um, I'm trying to think, what do I want to use? Uh, let's see, I might, you know what I'm gonna do? Uh, Taylor Swift's new album just came out. I'm going to say Taylor Swift, Karma lyrics, I might choose, um, this song and take maybe a verse of it or something. And sure, maybe I'll use some of these lyrics as my story. And I'll be like, karma is my fill in the blank. Karma is a blank. Okay, yeah, yeah I kind of kind of like that. We'll see. We'll see how we feel about it. <laughs> but let me maybe just start with one line at a time. So let me go to my index.html file. So I've got a couple spans in here, and this is one way I could do it. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's maybe stick with that. There are other ways to do it, but I think I want to stick with the span approach. So my story will say, um, it'll just be some song lyrics. Maybe I'll put each of these in a P tag, and I'll maybe use like just the first maybe four lines of the chorus here. Um, bear with me while I copy paste Taylor Swift lyrics, which is exactly what you were expecting when you signed up for a computer science course, right? <laughs> and then I might uh, use the span approach to maybe wrap this in um, spans to to switch up so span which is just a wrapper around like you know a collection of words or a single word whatever and I'll maybe have some white space in here to make it a little easier to read and okay 
So I've got my HTML. Let me run this just to look at what it looks like. And OK, I've got my song here. And so I want to change this span, which is currently a boyfriend. Karma is my boyfriend. And I want to change this to um, something else. So maybe I'll say this is like is boyfriend a noun. Let's go with noun. It doesn't have to be noun. You can say, give me a name of your family member or give me a, you know, whatever. Um, I'm going to stick with noun and I want to maybe just call it noun output and I'll change maybe give me an adjective to give me a noun and I'll change the ID up here to noun input. So, okay, now I've got give me a noun and then a blank text box. Maybe I'll delete this one. And okay, so now my HTML I think is right. I've got give me a noun and then a text box and then an okay button and then some some content here to replace so then we jump over to the script.js file actually before i do that uh let me demonstrate something that will almost certainly come in handy and that is if i click if i if i use this right now if i say uh give me a noun and i say i don't know sky i think sky is a noun and i click okay nothing happens and you know, right now it might be obvious that nothing happens because I haven't changed my JavaScript, but what should I do? What should I do when, when I click a button and nothing happens? Uh, well, the answer is always uh, check out your JavaScript console. So I'm going to open that up by going to more tools and then um, developer tools. And then I'm going to go to the uh, console tab. This is getting a little messy just because my screen is tiny for the video, but um, the console tab will contain any error messages that I'm getting. So here I see an error message, cannot read properties of null. I could Google this error message or search this error message, but what I want to maybe do first is look at script.js line four. So go here, script.js line four is here. So uh, let me close this out. It's getting really gross. Um, Line four is here and I'm getting an error message here. So that means that I should kind of look at this code a little bit more carefully. And in this case, I have adjective input element equals document dot get element by ID. And then I'm asking for the element with the ID of adjective input. So I go to my index.html file and sure enough, I don't have an input with that ID because I changed it to noun input. So I want to go back to script.js. Maybe I'll change this to like noun input element and noun input. Oops. And then I need to update my variable names here, noun input element and noun input element there. Okay. So now my uh, input element is fixed, but my guess is if I run this again, so I'm going to say sky again, I'm going to click okay. Uh, yep, that sure still didn't work. So let me open up my developer tools. And now I see that there's a problem on um, line eight saying adjective is not defined. So let me go back to line eight and okay, adjective is not defined. Okay, I think that's actually because I changed this variable to noun. So I'm gonna say noun. And I could keep running this and seeing what the error was, but hopefully that demonstrates, you know, what to do when you when you see that your code has stopped working. You open up your developer tools. In fact, I recommend keeping them open. Um, I'm not going to do that just because I'm running out of screen space, but usually I would just keep it open. And if I get an error, I'll see it kind of immediately. But let me finish this out. This is getting a little longer than I intended this video to be, but I know that I'm going to need to change some of these and this will also be noun. Okay, so I'm going to maybe just delete these because this is for that old um, input that I that I deleted already. So I'm going to run this, and now give me a nine, and I'm going to say um, uh, salad. <laughs> um, it's almost dinner time. I'm hungry, uh, so I'm going to click OK, and now you see that my song lyrics have changed too because Karma is my salad. I don't know if that rhymes or if it makes, you know, lyrical sense, but hey, that's part of the fun. And I could keep going. Um, so I could say maybe one more. Maybe I'll do one more just to demonstrate what that would look like, and then I'll kind of have fun with it. So I'm going to go back to my index.html file, 
and I'm going to maybe write this one from scratch. So rather than trying to change all of the variables, which gets kind of annoying, honestly, um, it is often easier to just write the code yourself, believe it or not. So I want to say like, give me a, I don't know, character. Um, so this will replace like karma is a God. And maybe we'll say karma is a gym from the office. I don't know. Uh, so I'll say input ID equals uh, character input. Okay, so I'm going to run that just to check my HTML. And that looks like it's working. Um, this doesn't do anything yet just because I haven't hooked it up in the JS, but um, it at least works in the HTML. So then let me go to script.js and I'm going to do something very similar to this, but let me just write it from scratch. So I want to create a variable that contains or points to the the element, the input element uh, that I have in my HTML. I want to reference that in JavaScript. So I'm going to create a variable, let uh, character input element, element equals, and then I'm going to call the document.getElementById function, and I'm going to pass it the ID that I used in my HTML, which was character input. So I'll just type character input. And then I want to get the value from that input. So I want to get whatever the user has typed. So I'll say let character equals um, character input element dot value. All right. And then I want to do something similar to with the output. So I want to get the character output element equals, and then I want to say document dot get element by ID character output. Okay. And now I could say character output element dot uh, inner text equals character. Okay. So let's save that and run it and see if that works. So uh, run and I'll say, give me a noun. I don't know, uh, banana and give me a character. What did I say earlier? Jim from the office. And let's just see if that works. I'm going to click OK. And OK, that didn't work, which I didn't plan. Uh, but that uh, I'm going to say that's a teachable moment. Um, so now I know that I need to look in my JavaScript console because likely I have an error message there. So let me go to that developer tools. And I see, OK, I cannot set properties of null setting inner text. And it's on line 16 of script.js. So let me go over to that. Line 16, character output element dot inner text equals character. OK, so I ask myself, what is character output element? And it's this variable. And it's set to whatever element has character output as my uh, as the ID. So let me go back to my index.html file. And yeah, OK, I didn't actually change my HTML yet. So I need to change this to uh, have an ID of character output okay and I could maybe clean this up just to make it a little bit more readable maybe okay so now I'm going to close my developer tools just to make some room so now I have my first p tag works sort of how it used to. And then I have another p tag that says karma is a, and then I have a span with an ID of character output and it has the default of God, just cause that's, that's the default. Uh, Taylor Swift chose that word, not me. Um, so let me run this and give me a noun. Um, I'm running out of nouns, uh, Apple and give me a character and I'll say Jim from the office. And now let me click. Okay. And now that worked. So now the lyrics are, because karma is my apple, karma is a gym from the office. And okay, so hopefully that demonstrated the, the process I would follow. Um, from here, uh, what I would do is kind of repeat that process. So maybe I would change like breeze to something else. Like I would say, maybe give me a weather phenomenon. So maybe it's tornado or hurricane or, or rain or whatever. And then on the weekend, maybe I'd say, like, give me a day of the week. And I could keep going with that same process that I just followed. Um, I want to maybe add some, I don't know, fun stuff here at the end. Uh, I don't know if anyone actually watches these videos. But 
if you are here and you're curious about some other stuff, then 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 let's uh, let's get into some stuff. Um, so, one thing that you might be curious about is like styling first of all. So, um, mm -hmm. I have a span, or let's start with p tags actually. So I've got my p tags here, and nothing is stopping you from adding CSS. So I'm not grading on CSS, but um, just because you have JavaScript doesn't mean that you can't do CSS. So in fact, you often will will you have all, all of the above. So let me maybe style the p tags to have a font of uh, like cursive just to get it to look a little different. So I'll run that. Does that change? And yeah, it does. So now I've got you know, a different font for all of my P tags. I could maybe make that button a little bigger. So like button, I could style that. And maybe give it like a font size of like, I don't know, let's just try something. 36 pixels, what's that look like? Is that really big? That's really big, but I don't know, kind of like it. Um, I could also do something like, I don't know, add an image of Taylor Swift. For example, let's try that. Um, I just want to go to like Wikipedia and get an image. Uh, where where's that link? Here maybe, and get a a image address is what I want and maybe maybe not we'll find out um, so maybe I'll add this to my index file down at the bottom maybe so I'll say image source equals that might work and just run this see what happens and yeah it does <laughs> so I've got the uh, <laughs> the fabulous Taylor Swift uh, looking at us uh, in judgment as we butcher her song uh, but I don't know, it's kind of fun. So you can also add images. Uh, the last thing that I want to maybe play with is the idea of maybe changing the uh, the styles in JavaScript itself. So maybe I'll start with a, a div here. And maybe I'll say like ID equals output container maybe. And I'll start by giving it a style with a display of hidden. So I'm doing this for a reason and I'll show you in a second, but let me just get it working first. And if I save that, does it all? Yeah, it does. Um, okay, so, oh, display, I didn't want to hit it, I wanted none, right? Uh, so if I run this, okay, now you see that my my song is gone. And that's because I have this inline style, which is just some CSS that styles this div. Um, with a display of none. So how I knew how to do that, if you didn't know how to hide stuff in CSS, I can maybe say like CSS hide element. And there's a bunch of ways to do it, but maybe let's go to good old Stack Overflow and see what they say. Um, yeah, here, display none. That's a common way to just hide something in HTML. And now I want to maybe only show my, my song after I have subbed in the the blanks. So um, in Mad Libs, usually you don't tell the person the story ahead of time. You you fill you have the blanks like written down somewhere, and then you ask for for uh, words without the person knowing how they'll be used. So that's what I'm trying to shoot for here. But really, I'm just trying to play with JavaScript in in or play with styling in JavaScript. So if I didn't know how to do that. Uh, what I would maybe type in is like JavaScript change element style. And uh, let's scroll down until we find something that uh, looks promising. I don't know, Stack Overflow is hit or miss, but let's, let's try it out. Um, so if I scroll down to my answers here, um, yeah, it looks kind of complicated. But okay, it looks like I can say like L dot style uh, and then give it like some curly braces. Eh, you know what? I don't like it. Ooh, JavaScript DOM CSS on W3 schools. That looks super promising. So document dot get element by ID, which is what we're already using dot style dot property equals new style. Ooh, I love it. Please, please show me more. 
Uh, so here's an example that I can maybe even try myself where this uses JavaScript to um, change the styling of P2 to have a blue color and Arial font and a font size of larger. So I want something like this, I think. So it's dot style dot something. Okay, cool. So back in my JavaScript, what I'll do is here in my sort of submit function, which is what's called when I click OK, I will first of all get a reference to the container. So let container element equals uh, document dot get element element by ID and I need to give it the ID. I don't remember what I called it already. Uh, output container. Okay. And now I have a reference to the div that contains all of the p tags for the song. And now I want to say container element dot style dot display equals and I need to give this a, a value that's not uh, not uh, none, so I'm just going to say block. You could use like flex here or grid or whatever, but I'm going to stick with a uh, good old fashioned block here. Um, again, you could probably search for this and, and find uh, other ways to do it, but that's how I'll do it. So let me run this and let's see what breaks. So give me a noun, uh, let's say, I don't know, uh, ice cream. You can tell I'm hungry because all of my nouns are food. And give me a character uh i'm going to say i don't know uh freddy krueger freddy krueger i don't actually know how to spell for krueger but let's go with that so i want to click ok here and what i hope to see is that my lyrics come back with the substitutions made and now it's visible and hey that worked so now my my story uh sort of only reveals itself after the substitutions have been made. So I don't know, do with that what you will, play with it if you want, but um, that is you know, maybe what I would include if I was just kind of having fun with this. Um, but I'm not looking for that. I am grading on whether you have five input elements that you get the value from and then output into your story. However you wanna do that is, is up to you. Okay, so this was a little bit of a long one, but I wanted to maybe show some, some fun stuff at the end here. So uh, take it or leave it, but uh, I had fun uh, playing Mad Libs with a Taylor Swift song, uh, which was not my intention when I sat down here. Um, so, okay, cool. Uh, I will leave you to it. Happy coding. And I, uh, as always, look forward to uh, what you come up with. All right, see you in class.